Hello, hello again, everybody. Zaga Tech is here with the Attack Sports for this Monday, December the 29th, 2014. This might be the last Attack Sports for the year. Do not know that, but until let's kick off with, of course, lots and lots of news on the NFL. Kicking off with the Week 17 Thoughts and Results. Let's get down to the big game that was here, and of course, that affected Michigan. Detroit Lions taking on the, new, the Green Bay Packers for the NFC North title. The label curse continue for Detroit Lions despite a okay effort. The Lions <laughs> choked again in a big game, losing 30-20 to against the Packers. Losing the first round by and have to play as a wild card for the second time in three seasons in the playoffs. At least this time, they don't have to play the Saints in the playoffs in the wild card. They play the Cowboys in the playoffs in the wild card. Of course, without their big defensive boy, McDonald and Sue, for the second week in a row, the Detroit player stopped somebody. First, it was Dominic Mayola stopping the Bear. Then this week, yesterday, it was McDonald and Stu stepping on, not stomping, on Aaron Rodgers' foot. As he is suspended for one game after that stepping on Rodgers' foot. On the Facebook, they're blaming Stafford for the loss by him throwing not good balls at all. They're blaming the referees for kissing too much Green Bay's asses. So, Lions choked another big one against the Packers. Despite the winning record, they can't win a playoff game unless they beat good teams. You know, they lost to every good team they played this year. They lost to Arizona. They lost to New England. They lost to Green Bay in Green Bay, although they beat Green Bay in Detroit, but that doesn't count. You know what I mean? And they're playing Seattle next season in Seattle, I'm hearing. So that's going to suck. They're going to die. But... Despite the winning record, it doesn't mean anything unless you beat really good teams. The Seattle Lions do against the Cowboys, who have momentum on their side, going to the wild card after destroying the Washington Redskins. 41-7, or 43-7, or some score like that. Yeah, 44-17. They just destroyed the Redskins. In the AFC playoffs, the situation was up and down all day. As the result of the Browns Ravens game, the Texans Jaguars game, and the Chargers Chiefs game will determine who would get the final slot. It's complicated to explain, but because of the results of those games, the Baltimore Ravens take the last slot in the AFC playoffs as the Pittsburgh Steelers won their game in a very interesting game against the Bengals to claim the AFC North title. Meanwhile, Pats sitting out there with starters, lost to the Bills with their now retired quarterback, high on in his last game ever in the NFL. Uh, the, AFC, the NFC South title, the weird division because the losers, the Panthers beat the Falcons, and the Falcons answer by firing people and get to the firing of people on this Black Monday in just a few minutes. And of course, it won't be his last game as a 49ers coach. Jim Harbaugh led his team to the victory. But of course, as we all know, he's on his way to being the U of M coach. And they'll be official tomorrow. Because they parted on good terms. Not firing, not critting. They parted amicably, they say. And the Seahawks claim the number one seed in the NFC after winning against the Rams. So, now that we're all set up, Let's get down to the playoffs schedule. Let me give you my thoughts and predictions on the wild card games for next week. Now, the first wild card game in the AFC would be NFC would be Arizona and Carolina Saturday on ESPN. As we go with Carolina, because Arizona, as we all know, they had big potential this year. They were on a roll, undefeated for most of the season. Then the quarterback problems started coming in. But their starter, Carson Palmer, out for the season. Their second guy, out for the season. Now the third big guy came in for a touchdown pass. So I think Carolina's got a better chance of beating Arizona. If Arizona had their 
quarterback situation settled, they would have a chance. But Arizona could be like the Lions, one and out in the playoffs. In the AFC wildcard game, number one, we got the Baltimore Ravens against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a rivalry game for the Saturday night game. Now, my thoughts on that, it's going to be a lot of interesting, but I have to go with Pittsburgh. They had a heck of a couple of games. They haven't been in the playoffs in years. They're back to some of their former glory. But who knows? Maybe Ravens could win because the Pittsburgh big player, LeVon Bell, got injured last night after being tackled by one of the one of the Bengals. And, oh, he got mouthed out by the coach of the Steelers. So let's see how that will affect Pittsburgh with their top warning guy out of the game. Also, Lions, of course, going without their big defensive guy, Sue, against the Cowboys. Hate to say this. Now, live in Detroit. Cowboys. I'm sorry. Lions blew the game against the Packers. How are they going to do against the Cowboys? They're at Cowboys Stadium. You know, yes. I know a lot of Lions fans could pick the Lions because Cowboys have a bad world record. Their home record. They're 4-4. Four four. They're undefeated on the world, though. But they're at home. Like I said, they're 4-4. Four four. So let's see how the Lions do against the Cowboys without Sue involved. Let's see if offense can play fucking better. Then the AFC wild card game for Sunday. Arizona, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. That's Saturday's wild cards. And then the AFC wild card for the Sunday. Detroit's the second game. The first game on Sunday. It's Cincy and Indy. I have to go with Indy on this one. Because every time that like, I've seen Bengals games, like Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton, every time he tries to throw the A.J. Green, their number one guy, he gets intercepted. So, I say Andy's got a better chance. So, we shall see what goes down. So, that's my predictions for the AFC Wild Card Games predicting Pittsburgh. Predicting Indy. The NFC Wild Card Games are predicting Carolina and the Cowboys. I like the Lions too, but come on. The Lions have no chance in hell of winning without Sue. Who could have played his final game as a Lion if he doesn't come back for the Cowboys game. Or comes back to the Cowboys game, he's trying to appear right now. Or if he does come back for the Cowboys game, and they lose anyway. So there you go. Now besides the playoffs thing, of course, the big talk is, of course, it's Black Monday. That's when all the sucky teams, all the coaches, jobs are on the line. Now here's the latest as of this pressing. Uh, the Bears fired their coach, Mark Tressman, and the GM, Phil Emery. Of course, Emery got fired just because he was the one that signed Jay Cutler for seven years. Of course, Bears had a horrible season this year. What was it, five and eight or whatever? And, they, and Jay Cutler is a stupid quarter. Like, nothing against Jay Cutler, but come on. He's not worth seven years. And I'm, and I'm kind of a Bears fan, so it's kind of tough to see the Bears suck this year. Falcons fired their coach, Mike Smith. Despite making it to the playoffs a few times, he can't go forward with losing a bunch. Look, Holtz, I think we should have saw this coming. The Jets fired Rex Smith at long last and the GM, John Itzik. Now, they're like the Lions, laughing, one of the laughing stocks in the NFL. So we shall see who will replace those guys as the new season approaches in the 2015-16 season. So now we got the NFL news out of the way. Let's get on down with the preview for the final wall of 2014 tonight with your hosts, the E to the C, Edson Christian, trying to make this wall awesome. Awesome than last week's wall on Christmas. Kind of a weak show. Same old guys fighting, even though it was a, it was a decent match in there, but it was mostly silliness. But this wall could have some potential because of the top three questions that must be answered tonight. Question number three. What will go down when finally the Ascension makes their long-awaited debut on the main roster? Now, if you've not been watching my wall reviews and all my pay-per-view reviews, I've been talking about NXT a lot in my reviews because I have the network for... But I love NXT. That's one way. To, that's the best thing about the network. NXT fucking rules, and no team exemplifies how awesome NXT is than the former NXT tag team champions, The Ascension. I've been 
lauding them for the last couple of months saying when they get in the main roster, they're going to shake up the tag team division. And now they get to finally get their chance to shake up the tag team division that needs an epic heel team. And that's what the Ascension is, an epic heel team. And I think they'll do just fine on the main roster. We have no word on who they'll debut with or they'll debut it against. But I'm looking forward to seeing the Ascension debut and hope they get a good reception. Then most NXT guys are going to come in the main roster. That guy that was, he's finally going to turn here at the beating of the bunny last week. Hopefully he turns here for, for real. So I'm looking forward to seeing Ascension tonight. Looking forward to seeing him finally debut in the main roster tonight. Breathe him out of breath. <laughs> Just too excited about today. I'm in a decent mood even though I had an interesting Christmas weekend. I hope everyone had a great Christmas weekend by the way. Uh, I had some great shopping, got some new WWE, I don't know if you can see them. My Macho Man sock, got some Hulk Hogan socks, and some Warrior socks too, so go there for Christmas, I hope they have a great one. And of course my New Year's Eve gig got cancelled, so I'm looking for new plans for New Year's Eve now. Well that's a topic for the attack line, tech sports. Keep on the wall, top three questions! That must be answered question number two, will any new matches be added? Or any new participants added to the Royal Rumble. Now, we do know one match. <sighs> Cena Lesnar 3 for the WWE Whatever Championship. Lesnar will probably once again not be on Water Night as usual. I mean, he may go back to UFC. He should. Because he's demeaning the WWE title. By not fucking defending it every month. And we have no other matches made for the Rumble yet, or any new participants besides the overall favorite being booked as the favorite, Roman Reigns. But I bet you they're probably not going to add any new matches until probably next week on Raw. But we shall see. And question number one, what will Edgy Christian do as tonight's Raw guest host? Now, without the authority, they have been going back and forth with these different guest hosts every week. And Edge and Christian is a guest host tonight, and I think it's an intriguing combination. I love Edge and Christian. I think there'll be there'll be a whole lot of fun to be a, your guest host tonight. I hope they bring them off their weekend of awesomeness and, of course, their five-second poses. But we'll see what goes down tonight on the final wall of 2014 tonight on USA Network at 8, 7 Central. Won't well, be good tonight for three reasons. One, it's the last war of the year. Two, Edge and Christian's all state. Three, and most importantly, it's the first war without Monday Night Football pausing them. So they better set up their game with the with nothing else to flip to. When war sucks, you flip the Monday Night Football. But with no football tonight, war better step up the fucking game. Especially heading towards the Royal Rumble, and more importantly, war so freaking mania. What's our fucking mania? Anyway, that is it for the Attack Sports for this Monday, Monday. Thank you very much for watching. See you later on tonight for my raw review. That my y'all been attacked. Five minutes sports news from Zach. Thank you all very much for watching. Once again, see you later. Yeah.